Welcome everyone, my name is Scott and welcome back to this tutorial series on building a space shooter game with Phaser 3. Previously we worked on building our two different enemy types and we added in the ability for them to move across our screen. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code for this point as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now we have our two basic enemy types and we gave them a simple movement pattern to allow them to come down our screen at our player. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on adding weapons to our game. And so for our weapons, we're going to create a very basic weapon component. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to attach it to our player and to one of our enemy classes. And then that way our enemies will be a little bit different besides just their movement pattern. And so for our weapon component, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to create an object pool uh, within Phaser by using a group. And what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to be able to reuse our game objects that we're creating for our bullets. And then that way we're not late wasting resources by continuously creating new game objects and then destroying them. And so by putting our configuration into this component, what we're going to be able to do is for our player and our enemy, we'll be able to control how frequently they can fire, uh, what the limit of number of bullets they can do is, and different things like that. And that's going to way and that way makes each ship type feel a little bit unique. And then later on, this could be extended. So then that way we could have an advanced weapon. So maybe a boss enemy could have a stronger weapon, or maybe the player could get an upgrade. And so they have a better weapon than the enemy. And so to go ahead and start creating our weapon component, what we'll do is in our source folder under components, let's go ahead and add a new uh, folder. And we're going to call this weapons. And then what we'll do is let's add a new file and we're going to call this weapon component uh, .js. All right, so the first thing we do is let's go ahead and export out our class. We'll do export class. Let's do weapon component. And then we'll go ahead and add in our constructor. All right, so for our weapon component, for it to actually work, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to end up associating this with one of our other game objects in our Phaser 3 game. And so for our player and our enemy ships, this is what we'll be attaching our weapon. And so to do this, we'll need to pass in the game object that's associated with this component. So then that way when we create our phaser group, we can put it in the same scene as that other game object. And so we're going to go ahead and add a property to keep track of that game object. Besides that, we're also going to need our input component. And so in order to know if we're supposed to fire our bullets or not, we'll need to go ahead and check our input component if that shoot button is being held down. So then we'll also need to keep track of our phaser group that we create. So we're going to go ahead and call this bullet group. And then finally for our group, uh, one of the things I mentioned was we'll be able to control, we'll be able to configure how frequently we can actually fire our bullets and limit the number of bullets based on which game object this component's attached to. And so to keep track of all that, we'll go ahead and add another property. We're going to call this bullet config. So then what we'll do in our constructor is when we create an instance of our component, we'll expect our game object. We're going to expect that input component, and then we'll also expect our bullet config. So then what we can do is let's go ahead and assign those to our properties. So we'll have our game object will be equal to game object. Our input component will be equal to our input component. And then our bullet config will be equal to the bullet config. And so now to go ahead and actually create our group, uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be using a phaser three physics group. So then that way we can create physics sprites in our game. And then that way they're going to go ahead and have our physics. So we'll have our body. So we then be able to check for collisions. And so this is very similar to creating a regular group. Um, so what we'll do is let's go ahead and assign this to our property. And so we'll have our bullet group and we're going to set it equal to this. We're going to reference our game object. Then we want to grab our phaser scene. And now what we want to do is reference our, our physics plugin. And now we want to use the add property to go ahead and create our game objects. So then what we'll want to do is we we'll want to go ahead and create a group. So now for our group, we can go ahead and provide our configuration for our group. Uh, so when we go ahead and create a phaser three group, there's a few different things we can pass. One of them is if we have any existing game objects we want to add to our group, we can add them when we create our group. Uh, we can also pass configuration options that will be applied to all of the child game objects. And so if we want to like apply a select a certain gravity to each game object or an acceleration by passing that here, we can do that. In addition to that, we can also provide uh, configuration options for the group at the top level. And so one example is if I want to go ahead and provide a name to our group so we know which group this is, uh, we can do that here. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a unique name for this weapon component. And I'm just going to call this bullets. And then we want to go ahead and we're going to use a GUID a unique identifier so then that way each instance of our weapon component will have a different name. And so to go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and use phaser and so we'll do phaser.math.random.rnd and then uuid 
And what that's going to do is generate that unique identifier. And then that way, each of our weapon component groups will have a unique name. And so phaser doesn't override this, but it allows us to set it. So if we want to go ahead and reference our groups by that identifier, we can. And then one other property we're going to set is enable. And what this is going to do is typically we can go ahead and enable our uh, group right out of the gate when it's created. But we can go ahead and set this to false. And what this is going to do is it won't actually be enabled until we uh, need to use those game objects. And so we'll go ahead and set that to false because we won't actually want to uh, do anything with our bullets until the player actually fires a bullet or the enemy does. And so what this is going to do, this is just going to create our phaser three physics group, but we're not going to have any other game objects associated with it. And so to actually create our bullet game objects or so our sprites, there's a few ways we can do this. Uh, one of the ways is we can try to grab a game object from our group. And if there's none that's available, we can create a new one on the fly. Another option is we can use built in methods to go ahead and create multiple game objects. So that way our pool has a starting number of objects to reuse. And so that's what we're going to do uh, because we know with our player, we'll be firing lots of bullets, same thing with the enemy. And so we'll just have a pool of bullets ready to use. And so we don't have to worry about creating them on the fly. So to go ahead and do this, what we're going to do is we're going to reference our bullet group, and then we're going to use the create multiple method. And so what this method does, it allows us to provide a configuration uh, for configuring the game objects that will be created. And so the first thing we're going to set is the key. And so our key is going to be our asset key for which texture will be applied to these sprite game objects. And so we'll use our bullet uh, sprite. Next, we can go ahead and specify quantity. And so this allows us to specify how many of these game objects we want to create so they're available in our pool. And so for this, we're going to pull this from our bullet configuration. So we've not defined this yet, but one of the properties we're going to end up setting is going to be a max count. And this will allow us to configure a total number of bullets that will be available uh, for each weapon component instance. Then we're going to go ahead and specify our active and our visible uh, properties and we're going to set both of these to false. And so what these do is when our game object is not active, uh, phaser is not going to apply any physics to this game object since it's not actually in use. And when it's not visible, it won't be rendered out to our scene. And so now what this does is this now adds 10 sprite game objects to our group. So then that way we can now use them uh, when we're ready to. All right. And so before we can actually test and see if anything is in our group, we actually need to create an instance of our component. So what we'll do is let's jump over to our player class and we're going to go ahead and create our weapon component. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and add a property for this. And so let's come up to the top of our class. Uh, we'll go ahead and add in weapon component. Then what we'll do is after we create our components in our constructor, we're going to go ahead and create our weapon component. So what we'll do is we'll do this. Let's do our weapon component and oh, let's actually fix our name. Uh, so we'll have component with a small. Oh, let's go ahead and fix our name real quick. So we'll have weapon component. And now we're going to set it equal to a new weapon component instance. And so for this, we'll go ahead and pass in this for our container will be our game object that we're associating with our weapon component. Then we'll go ahead and pass in our keyboard input component. And so we can check for if our space key is pressed. And then finally, we need to provide our configuration. And so right now for our configuration, the only thing we're expecting is this max count here. So that's all we'll pass for the time being. Uh, so for max count, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll specify this in our config like we did with our other uh, properties. So we're going to go ahead and do config. And we'll go ahead and do player, we'll do bullet, and we're going to go ahead and do max count. I'm going to copy that. Let's jump over to config and we'll go ahead and add that in. So under our player, we'll go ahead and set that in. So we'll do export const. And so for our starting bullet and so for our max number of bullets, uh, we'll go ahead and do 10. So now if we go ahead and save, let's come back to our weapon component and I'm going to go ahead and do a council log. So we're going to do a council log and I'm going to log out our bullet group. All right, so when a scene refreshes, we should now see a council log from our weapon component file. And if we go ahead and expand that, we'll see this is a reference to our phaser three group. And then what we'll see for our children, we have 10 objects in there, and these are all going to be sprites that have been added to our scene. And then so if we take a look up in our top left corner, we'll see that we had some game objects created in our default position of zero zero. And right now, because they're not active, they're not being rendered, but we can, because of debug, see where their physics bodies are. All right, so now we've seen that our game objects are in our group. What we need to do now is now we need to add support for once we do hit the space bar or our input component recognizes that we are able to shoot, we're going to go ahead and fire one of our bullets. And so to go ahead and do that, we're going to have that check in our update method. Let's go ahead and add an update. And so what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and check our input component to see if we're holding down the shoot button. So it'll be our space bar for our player. So we'll do if this, our input component, 
And we'll do shoot is down. So if that's true, what we need to do is now we need to grab one of our objects from our group. And then that way we can go ahead and fire that bullet from where our space, from where our player's ship is. All right, so if we are holding down our shoot button, what we need to do now is now we need to grab one of our game objects from our group. And we'll wanna go ahead and update its position to be in front of whichever ship is actually firing our bullet. And so to go ahead and grab a reference to our game object, what we can do is we can use uh, one of our built-in methods on our group. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do const, we're going to do bullet, we're going to set equal to this, our bullet group, and then we're going to do get first dead. And so what this method does is it iterates through our array of children for our group, and it's going to find the first object that is active is set to false. And if it's set to false, it's going to go ahead and return that game object, so then that way we can reuse it. And what will happen is if all of our children are currently active, it's gonna go ahead and return null. And so this method is really useful if we don't want to create a new game object when none of our game objects are actually available in our pool. And so for our weapon, we wanna control the max number of bullets our player can actually shoot at a time. And this method is going to allow us to do that. If we didn't care, we could use a different method that would allow us to go ahead and create a game object if one's not found. Uh, but we won't be doing that. And so what we need to do now is now we need to check to see if our bullet was actually found. So what we're gonna do is do if our bullet is undefined or if our bullet is equal to null, then we wanna go ahead and just return because uh, there's nothing else we can do with the button being held down. If a bullet was found in our group, now we wanna go ahead and update its uh, position. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna calculate that. So we'll do const x will be equal to our game object so for our player, it's going to be our container for our ship. And we'll go ahead and just copy the same X value. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do our Y values, so do const Y. So we're also gonna grab our game object and we'll grab our Y property. But now we're gonna add an offset. So then that way our bullet uh, will be in front of our ship instead of at the same position. And so we'll go ahead and do add. And so for this, this is gonna be different depending on which uh, game object that the component's tied to. So we're gonna grab this from our bullet configuration and we'll do our Y offset. So then real quick, let's jump over to our player class. We're gonna go ahead and add that in. So we'll go ahead and grab our Y offset. We'll go ahead and pass that in. And we're just gonna do negative 20 uh, for our player. So then back over here, now what we wanna do is now for our bullet object, we wanna go ahead and update our game object's position. And so we'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and do our bullet. We're gonna do set position. And we're gonna go ahead and do X and Y. So after we've done that, now what we need to do with our bullet is we, now we need to go ahead and make it active and we want to make it visible. And so to go ahead and do that, we could go ahead and set our active and visible properties on our game object. Another option what we can do is because we also want to enable our physics body is we can go ahead and change this method here to be enable body. And what this method allows us to do is we can pass multiple arguments to go ahead and set all these values at one time. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is first we're going to go ahead and pass true. And what that will do is it's going to go ahead and reset the position on our physics body uh, for our bullet. So right now our bodies are up here in the top left hand corner. And so when we spawn our bullets, we want that body to be where we actually position our game object instead of up here where it's originally at. So by setting that to true, it'll be updated. And then we pass our X and Y properties of where we want that game object to spawn. And now we can go ahead and specify those properties for enabling and for showing our game object. So we'll want to go ahead and set these to true for both of these. So if we want to go ahead and test real quick, let's jump over to our player class. And what we'll want to do is in our update method here, let's go ahead and call our update method on our weapon component. So now what will happen is if we press our space bar, we'll see right away this bullet is added to our scene and is placed right in front of our ship. And because of our existing logic, what's happening is we're gonna have multiple key presses. So we're adding multiple game objects at one time. And that's why it only looks like we can only add one bullet at a time. So as an example, if I hold the left key and then hold down space, you'll see now we spawn all of our bullets. And so what's happening here is our update method, because this is tied to our game loop, this is being called multiple times per second. And so, as we're holding down that key, this is being invoked many, many, many times. And because those game objects are available, it grabs one and then it goes ahead and spawns it. And then after we spawn our game objects, they're now active and visible. So now we don't have any more available in our pool. And so for us to go ahead and space out how frequently we spawn these bullets, we're gonna need to add some type of interval, which will be 
which will prevent us from firing our bullets this rapidly. And so to go ahead and do that, what we want to do is when we fire a bullet, we're going to want to go ahead and keep track of when that bullet was actually fired. And then once we fire it, we want to go ahead and do a countdown. And once we're uh, reached zero, then we'll be eligible to go ahead and fire a bullet again. And so to go ahead and keep track of this, what we're going to do is let's add a new property to our class. And so what we'll do is, is we're going to call this fire bullet interval. And what we'll do is in our constructor, we're going to go ahead and set this to be zero. So as soon as we create our component, we'll say we're at zero. So we're eligible to go ahead and spawn uh, one of our bullets. And then what we'll do is down here in our update method, we're going to go ahead and check to see before we even do this logic here, if our interval is greater than zero. So if our fire bullet interval is greater than zero, that means we're not eligible to fire our new bullets. So we're just going to go ahead and return early. So now what we want to do is after we fire our bullet, we want to go ahead and update this to some value. So what we'll do is we'll do our fire bullet interval and we're going to pull this from our bullet config. And so for our bullet config, we're going to add an interval property to this. And so what this is going to do is now it's going to change that zero to some millisecond value that we want to keep track of. And so let's say we want to spawn a bullet every two seconds. We set this to 2000. And then what we would need to do in our update method is before we do this logic, we actually need to decrement this interval based on our delta time in our game. And so for our delta time to go ahead and track this, this is actually built into phaser. And so when our update method is called for our scenes, we receive two arguments. The first one's going to be the current time of when this was invoked. And then the second one's going to be our delta time, which is the number of milliseconds since the last frame was ran in our game. Uh, so basically the amount of time that's lapsed between the last call. And so with that delta time, what we can go ahead and do is use that to decrement our interval because we'll know when we'll know how many milliseconds has passed since the last time this ran. And so for us to go ahead and actually get our delta time on our weapon component, what we need to do is we'll add this as an argument. We'll jump back to our player class. And now what we need to do is we need to pass that delta time to our component. And so what we'll go ahead and do is now, before any of our other checks, we're just going to go ahead and do our fire interval. And we'll go ahead and we're going to decrement it by that delta time. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do real quick is I'm just going to do a council log. And we're going to go ahead and log our delta time. And then we'll log our fire bullet interval. And so what should happen is immediately we should start logging a bunch of information and you'll see we have our delta times and now our interval is now growing very fast in the negative direction. And because it's below zero, we should be able to fire one of our bullets. All right. And then so what we'll need to do in order to fully test this, you'll see once we hit our spacebar, we get NAN and that's because we didn't specify our interval here. So we're trying to pass in undefined. So what we need to do is back in our player class, let's go ahead and pass in that interval. And so we'll go ahead and add a new property. And we're also going to set this in our configuration. And so what we'll do is we're going to change this to player bullet and we'll do interval. We'll go ahead and copy that, jump over to config, we'll go ahead and do export our const. We'll do our new variable and let's go ahead and do 300 for our milliseconds go ahead and save. So now you'll see now if we hold our spacebar and move, now we have that gap between our bullets because we're waiting at 300 seconds before we can actually fire our next bullet. So now that we have addressed the issue with spawning our bullets, what we actually need to do now is actually add in our logic to have them actually fly across our screen uh, towards our enemies. And so to do that, we just need to go ahead and update our velocity on our bullets. So then that way they fly in the direction we want. So before, right after we call enable body, what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll update our body's velocity. And so we're going to go ahead and reference our bullet. Let's do body. We're going to do velocity. And what we'll do is we're going to target our Y velocity. And we're going to go ahead and decrement this by this, our bullet config. And we'll go ahead and add a speed property. And then what we'll do is let's jump over to our player class. We'll go ahead and define the rest of our properties real quick. So besides our interval, we'll need speed. And so we'll go ahead and leave that blank for a second. We're also going to need a lifespan. And we'll come back to this in a second as well. And then we'll have our max count, our offset, and then one last property is going to be flip y. We're going to set that equal to false. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this here and we'll go ahead and update our names for our properties. And so we'll have our bullet and we're going to have speed and then we'll have bullet and we'll have our lifespan. So in our configuration, we'll go ahead and do export or const. We'll have our speed for our speed. We're going to go ahead and do 300. And then we're going to have our lifespan and we'll go ahead, export cons. And for our lifespan, we're going to do three. I'm going to save. 
And so for our configuration, uh, what we're doing here is our speed is tied to our velocity that we're adding here. And so if we hit our spacebar, we'll see now our velocity is applied to our game objects, and now they fly forward uh, through our scene. Our other properties we added was lifespan. All right, so lifespan, uh, what that's going to be used for is as we fire our bullets, at some point, uh, we need them to actually become inactive in our game. And so this is either going to be when it collides with an enemy uh, game object, or once it's reached the end of our scene, or has been alive for a number of seconds, we want to go ahead and have it be disabled so we can reuse it in our object pool. If not, what's going to happen is we're eventually going to run out of bullets because we don't actually kill any of them off, and so we don't have any available in our group. And so by using our lifespan, we'll say they're alive for so many seconds, then we'll go ahead and have them disappear when they're off our screen, and our player can reuse them. Our last property, Flip Fly, that's going to be tied to when we spawn our game objects. So right now when we spawn them, they're faced towards the enemy game object, but when our enemy spawns them, we'll want them to be facing the other way, and so we want to go ahead and flip it like what we do with our enemy ships. All right, so for our lifespan, uh, what we're going to need to do for each of our bullets is we're going to need to keep track of how long that bullet's been alive for. And so what we can do is when our bullet is spawned, we can go ahead and set a property uh, to uh, the uh, lifespan value that we set, and then as our delta time is being passed to us, we can go ahead and decrement it just like we're doing our fire bullet interval here. And then once that property is reached zero, then we can go ahead and disable our game objects. We'll be able to reuse it. And so uh, one of the ways to do this is we can use the set state method. And what this method does is allow us to provide a state to a game object that can be a number or a string. And phaser internally will never modify this property and we can actually use it for our game. And so to go ahead and do this, what we're going to go ahead and do is right after we set our velocity, we'll go ahead and use that method. So we'll do bullet, we'll go ahead and do set state, and then what we'll do is we'll do our bullet config, we'll grab our lifespan. And then so for decrementing it, what we're going to want to do is we'll need to decrement this for each of our child game objects in our group. All right, so now actually go ahead and update our state and decrement our lifespan. We'll need to go ahead and update our game object to go ahead and listen for the arcade physics world step event. And what this event does is anytime our physics world instance is updated, there's a single step in our update game loop, then this event will be emitted. And what's really nice about this, this will be emitted after our physics bodies and our colliders have already been updated. So already after our update method is ran, then what we can do is now check uh, to see if our lifespan is now below uh, zero and we can decrement our value based on the delta time that's provided there. And so by using this event, we're going to have this very nice game loop where basically we'll update our physics body. And so we'll update our X and Y position of our bullets. And then after that's updated, we're going to go ahead and check to see how long it's been alive for us and it's spawned. And then we'll go ahead and despawn it. And so again, listen for this event. What we're going to do is we're going to do logic very similar to like what we did for our player, where we listen for our scene events this way. So what we're going to do is copy this logic here. We'll come back to our weapon components. Let's go up to our constructor. We're going to paste that code. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is for these events, we'll need to go ahead and reference our game objects. We'll do this. We're going to go ahead and reference our game object. Let's copy that. We're going to go ahead and paste that for each of these. And this is for the event we want to listen for. It's going to be phaser. It's going to be physics. This going to be our arcade physics, our events, and then our world step. And so for this, instead of calling update, we want to go ahead and call world step. And so we'll add this method in a second. And then when our game object is destroyed, we'll also want to go ahead and turn this off, just like what we did in our player class. And so what we'll do is let's copy our event name. We'll go ahead and paste that. And we'll also update our method name. We'll go ahead and paste that. So now what we'll do is below our update method, let's go ahead and add in world step. And we'll go ahead and add in one argument. And we're just going to call this delta. And so for our delta, now what we need to do is for our phaser uh, physics group, we need to grab all of our children and then update their state uh, based on that delta. And so to grab all of our children, we're going to reference our bullet group. We're going to use the guilt children method, and this is going to return an array of all of our game objects. And now with that array, we can iterate over it. And so we'll go ahead and have our bullet. And for each bullet, what we'll want to do is first we're going to check to see if it's active. So if our bullet is not active, then we don't need to do any of this logic. So we just go ahead and return early. Otherwise, what we want to go ahead and do is now we want to update that state. And so what we'll do is we'll do our bullet, we'll reference our state, and we're going to go ahead and decrement it by the delta that was provided to this method. 
So now, because now we're decrementing that value provided three by this value, now we need to check to see if it reaches zero or below. And if it does, now we want to go ahead and disable it. And so we'll edit this statement. So we'll do if our bullet state is less than or equal to zero, then what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to call a disable body. And so what this method does, it's very similar to our enable body where we can set multiple things at one time. And what it does is allows us to uh, make our game object inactive. And so if we pass true for that, it also let us make it not visible. And we go ahead and pass true. And so now what's going to do, it's going to hide our game object and make it not active. And then internally, our phaser group will make it available to our pool. So we'll be able to reuse that object. All right, so if we come over to our scene, we should be able to go ahead and test. If we hold on our space bar, we'll see we're firing our upper bullets based on our interval. Oh, and then we eventually run out. So what happened? Uh, let's take a look at our constructor. Ah, yes. Yeah, so when we register our event listener. We didn't register our event listener correctly. So for our game object, because we're listening for this physics event, we don't want to do this on our scene event directly. We want to go ahead and do our scene. Then we want to reference physics. And we want to go ahead and reference the physics world. So let's copy that. And we'll go ahead and replace events with that. And now we should be able to go ahead and test. So now if we fire our bullets, we'll see eventually we start to run out. And because now our lifespan is now reaching zero, we're now getting our object back into our pool and we're able to fire that bullet again. All right, so now that we have our object pool working properly, we're just going to make a few more updates to our bullet game object, and then we'll be done with our component. And so as we're firing our bullets, the first thing that I notice is that our body for our bullets is quite large compared to our bullet. And so once we add in our collisions, uh, that's not really a fair collision because that collision box is much bigger than our game object. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and resize it to match our game object. But in addition to that, our bullets are kind of large, especially when compared to our enemy game object ships, the bullets look bigger. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and scale these down so that way they're a little bit smaller. So what we're going to go ahead and do is right after we call set state, uh, let's go ahead and modify these. We're going to go ahead and do our bullet. First, let's go ahead and set our scale. And so for our scale, we're going to just scale this down uh, to 0 0.8. And now we want to go ahead and update our bullets uh, body size. And so we'll do bullet. We're going to reference our physics body. Let's call set size. And we're going to go ahead and do 14 by 18 uh, pixels. And then the last thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and set our flip Y property. And we're going to set that to use our bullet config property that we passed in earlier. And so we'll do bullet set flip Y. And this will be equal to this, our bullet config, and then our flip Y property. So now if we go ahead and save, we'll see our bullets are much smaller and our physics bodies actually match our game objects. Uh, so this will be a little bit more fair. The last thing we're going to go ahead and do is we have an animation for our bullet while it's flying, and we're going to go ahead and play that. So right after we do our set state, let's go ahead and reference our bullet game object. We'll do play since it's a sprite, and we'll go ahead and do, or we'll play our bullet animation. So now when we play, we'll see that our bullet looks like it's shiny. It's actually rotating. Uh, so real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this up to two, and just so it's a little bit bigger, so a little bit easier to see. You see we have this really very nice bullet animation and it's going to look really nice once we get rid of our debug. Uh, so it's going to revert our scale back down. All right, so one last thing we're going to do for our component is we're just going to add a getter so we can actually reference our phaser group. So what we'll do is after our constructor, we're going to go ahead and add get and we're just going to add get bullet group. And then what we'll do is we'll return this and we'll reference our bullet group. All right, so with our weapon component in a good spot, what we're going to go ahead and do is now we're going to go ahead and update our enemy to actually have a weapon as well, so they can go ahead and fire at us. And so the first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and jump over to our configuration. Let's copy all of our bullet properties here for our player. We're going to add those for our enemy. And so what we'll do is we'll come down to our enemy fighter. Let's go ahead and add in these properties, and then we'll just copy this. We'll do enemy fighter, and we'll change player to be enemy fighter. So now because this is all config driven, we can actually modify these properties. And so for our speed, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do negative 200. And so because our bullets are going to be flying at us this way, we actually want our velocity to be negative. So that way it moves down our screen. Next for our interval, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this larger. So that way our enemy starts off firing really slow. And uh, so it'll be an easier enemy when the game starts. Then we'll keep our lifespan and our max count the same. So now what we should be able to do is let's jump over to our fighter enemy uh, class and let's go ahead and add in our component. So what we'll do is after our input component, uh, let's go ahead and add a property. We'll do weapon component. We'll come down here 
Let's go ahead and create an instance of our weapon component and we'll set equal to new weapon component. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do, so we're gonna provide our configuration. And so for our weapon component, we're gonna go ahead and pass in this for our container. We'll pass in our bots input components. We'll do this input component. And now for our configuration, I'm just gonna jump over to our player class and we'll go ahead and copy this here. We're gonna go ahead and paste it, but now we'll go ahead and update our properties. And so we'll have enemy fighter and we'll have our bullet speed. We'll just update all these. And now for our offset, we are going to go ahead and change this to 10 so it matches our game object. And then finally for flip Y, we're gonna set this to true so our bullet flies in the correct direction. So now what we should be able to do is let's jump over to our game scene and we're gonna go ahead and uncomment out our fighter enemy and I'm gonna comment out our scout enemy so we can go ahead and do our testing. So now when our enemy spawns and starts flying towards us, oh, nothing happens. Ah, yeah, so back in our fighter enemy, I forgot to call our update method. Uh, so let's go ahead and reference our weapon component and we're going to call update. Oh, and one last thing we need to do is let's go ahead and pass in our delta time. So if we go ahead and save and refresh. We should now see our enemy starts flying towards us and he's slowly firing bullets at us. All right, so one last change we're gonna go ahead and do is let's jump over to our config and we're just gonna go ahead and bump up our bullet speed to be 200, negative 280 so that way the bullets actually fire a little bit faster at the player. All right, so those last changes and by adding our uh, weapon component to both of our player and enemy, that actually wraps up this video. So in our next video, we're going to focus on adding in collisions to our game. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add collisions first for our player ships and the enemy ships. And then we're also going to add collisions between our bullet groups and the opposite enemy as well. So as a reminder, there is a link in the description of the video. It's a complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.